Poland, home of Pope Jean Paul II and Chopin, was for centuries once also the home to the largest Jewish community in the world, so much so that it was known as the Second Jerusalem. So visiting Auschwitz, the location of much of the Jewish genocide, is rather horrifying. The prisoners there were seen only for the value they could provide. If they were fit to work, they were sent to work. I arrived on a foggy winter day and it really gave me a better sense of the torturous conditions. I mean, I was losing sensation in my toes whilst wearing boots and two pairs of socks. So it's no wonder many prisoners didn't last very long in thin uniforms and wooden shoes. Once the prisoners were no longer fit for work, they were sent away to be gassed. But I feel like saying gassed is still too nice of a word. No, they were murdered. Murdered because they were no longer of any use to the Nazis. But nothing was wasted. Their hair was cut off and used to form fabrics. Any gold teeth or other valuables were looted and added to the Nazi funds. And it's only because these prisoners were no longer seen as people that such crimes can be committed. And it's a gradual process, not allowing Jews to do certain professions, discouraging others from trading with Jews, humiliating them in public by, for example, cutting off their beards and laughing at them, making the Jews wear a Star of David at all times to show others that they were Jewish. Slowly, it became easier to not see the person, but just see the label that had been created for them. Just seeing them as other. Only when you no longer see these people as people can you shame them and rob them of all sense of humanity and hope, like what happened at Auschwitz. I mean, how else can you explain giving them only two toilet breaks a day, or allowing them to shower themselves or wash their clothes just once every three months, or punishing 10 others in your block if you manage to escape by placing them in these standing cells? That's four people in each of these cells, and they weren't fed yet they were still expected to work during the day. It's no wonder most who ended up here didn't last longer than two days, or by carting Jews from other nations on a cramped, windowless train carriage for days without food or water or toilet breaks, and then deciding once they had arrived whether they were fit for work or were to be gassed immediately, or cremating the bodies and disposing of the ashes in ponds to hide the evidence. Out of Poland's three million Jews, less than 10% survived the Holocaust. And walking through this place where a lot of this happened and standing on the ashes of the dead, it's hard not to feel sick. How could we dehumanize these people so immensely that doing these crimes was seen as okay? And how can we make sure history doesn't repeat itself more than it already has? These are the questions I'm left with as the bus rolls through the grey, foggy countryside back to Krakow. I think a visit to Auschwitz is something everyone should do in their lifetime. It has reminded me of how easy it can be to mistreat others when you perceive that they are a lower form of human. And it has shown me how important it is to remember what happened here. Poland remembers. Germany remembers. Do you?